like most people that get involved in something, it, in our case, it's, it happened with a triggering event. And the triggering event in our case was the birth of our daughter, Corinna, who was born uh, early at 24 weeks, and she weighed one pound, four ounces, and was about nine inches long. You feel so helpless. I mean, Tony and I are used to being able to fix things, and you, know, you set a goal and you achieve it. I just felt that raising a child, I could um, fix whatever um, needed to be done. Never ever expecting that you would have a child with any neurological disorder. We um, were really brought to our knees. Alex was born on March 17th on St. Patrick's Day. Um, he was healthy, everything was fine, until the next day, Alex, Alex started having seizures. And I started documenting every single seizure that he had to show data to the doctors. Alex was having seizures every other minute. It, it just went over like over 100 seizures a day. That's just one day, 24 hour period. She started out, you know, just like a regular child, you know, being born and, you know, everything seemed as if it was normal with her the whole time. And, and at a certain point, it just, it's like her world kind of changed and we didn't really understand it. We ended up finding out that it wasn't really autism, but it was, you know, they call it Rett syndrome. The number of children with these neurodevelopmental disorders seems to be, in fact, increasing. It's not even stable. And we need to get fundamental insight into those conditions so that we can make a difference. These disorders are bigger than any one lab. These disorders are bigger than any one investigator. That it's going to take all of us. It's going to take a team. It's going to take not only the scientists, it's going to take the clinicians. It's going to take the clinical scientists to work together in order to solve them because they are challenging. Dan and I are both very other-oriented people. We love helping others. This Neurological Research Institute will make a huge difference. It truly is one of a kind in the world. It's the first pediatric neurological research institute in the United States, probably even the world, where we bring together under one roof pediatricians, neurologists, geneticists, neurogeneticists to study all of these problems that affect 14 million children in America, 300 million children worldwide that have some type of neurological deficit. The leadership of the institute will be provided by Dr. Huda Zogby. Huda was trained here in pediatrics, pediatric neurology, and genetics. And she's clearly one of the leading, if not the most important figure today in neurogenetics in the United States. And towards the end of my child neurology training, um, I realized that this is a devastating specialty. It's a specialty where you can make a diagnosis but the best you can tell the parents is that we really can't do anything for your child. And I could not bear the thought that I'm gonna spend the rest of my career handing out bad news and feeling I can do nothing. What drove me to research was seeing children with a variety of neurological diseases, but particularly a child with Rett syndrome. Imagine the disappointment once you've seen your child hit all the normal milestones and you see them doing beautifully and all of that gone and you're now looking at a child who can do nothing. Huda approached this in a way that I've never seen uh, before uh, and that she became not just familiar with but really profoundly expert in the tools she needed to understand this disease. And what's exciting now is just in the last 10 years what has happened in terms of discoveries. Huda talked about Rett syndrome big breakthrough in terms of these girls who have these neurological disorders. We have breakthroughs in Fragile X syndrome. We have breakthroughs in Angelman syndrome. We're studying autism 
But you know what? They're all being done here. All of the pieces are here in place today at Texas Children's and at Baylor College of Medicine to make an important contribution, actually a seminal contribution, in this area. The big question is how do we accelerate drug discovery? How do we accelerate the road to intervention to make a difference for patients? You can pick any medical problem for which there's an effective treatment. On average, it's 25 to 30 years. For certain things like TPA that's used in heart attacks, it's even longer than that. This is what we hope to shorten, because if we shorten that, we know that the period from a successful treatment in an animal model to a human is certainly within the frame of five years. So if you bring a group of investigators already on site, working together, I've never worked with a chemist next door. I've never worked with a behavioral psychologist in both mouse and humans next door. I had to always go find them, spend time on the phone, calling, traveling around the country, inviting visitors here. If we can get enough of these people in one place, this is practical. This is what's going to accelerate discovery. There are other research institutes around the country, but what Huda and the doctors are really trying to get at is to help eradicate, hopefully, many diseases before they even strike. Many of the same mechanisms that lead to degenerative diseases in children also lead to degenerative diseases or the same mechanisms are operative in degenerative diseases of adults. So there's going to be benefits to the adult population as well. I think this building is going to be one of the most exciting architectural pieces in the medical center and in Houston for this matter. It's going to be connecting Texas children with Baylor, with MD Anderson. We're going to be connected to the research building of MD Anderson. We're going to be connected to the research buildings of Baylor College of Medicine. There is no other institute, there's no other building in the medical center that not only mentally and scientifically connects people, but it's also physically connected. The building will be green, which I think will be extremely important for the city of Houston. So we're working very hard so that it is sustainable, so that it's great for the environment and workers in it would feel wonderful about that. One of the key components is the core for neurological examination of hundreds and thousands of mice. So after a lot of talk and uh, visiting different cores and looking at all the needs, all the neurologic exams we wish to do on these mice, we've designed the vivarium where these animals will be and where all the rooms for the behavior where you can study multiple models of disease at the same time. Also, you'd like to have imaging of the brain of these animals, so that has also been designed, the whole imaging suite. We also designed the labs, and the labs are really, really wonderful because they will allow investigators to interact, to work in an environment which is very open, to facilitate collaborations and the birth of new ideas. I do not believe there is any other place today in the United States that starts with the core facilities, the core laboratories, the intellectual talent in genetics, the talent we have in pediatric neurology, coupled with the resources that we can bring to bear, and serves the large number of children with neurologically handicapping conditions that we have here. There is no other place in the United States that has all of those features in place at this time. I expect this to be just one of those milestones which takes the medical center in our community to that next level. There is no time in my memory, in the 50 years I've been doing science, in which private philanthropy is more important than today. The cutback in government funding is painful and devastating. We need more funds to take advantage of the scientific knowledge we now have. We are really marshalling the troops for a major advance for understanding neurological and psychiatric disorders. These are the most devastating diseases of humankind. And we are in a position now to bring biochemistry, molecular biology, genetics, anatomy, psychology to bear on understanding them in a unified fashion. And this institute is an exemplar of how to mobilize the science of mind 
for a particular set of disorders. It's the ground floor opportunity to participate in something that can truly be world changing. More importantly, it will be world changing for the population in our world that is probably in the least position to be advocates for themselves.